Welcome to the house of the Lord, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. I'm Pastor David Rose now. I thank God to gather with you on this saint's triumphant service. What a message the Lord has for us today. God bless our time in this marvelous word. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please follow along as I offer a prayer for this day. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message is recorded in Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps the bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. The word of our Lord. I'll offer a short prayer for the Lord to help focus our minds on the good he has for us in this word. Lord, open now my heart to hear and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. Last week, we watched in wonder as Jesus described what it will look like when he returns. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, Jesus said, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. Did you try to picture what that will look like? How bright will his glory be? What will it sound like when all his angels come in the air with him? How bright will all his holy angels shine with him? And remember that at that time, Jesus said, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Jesus' glory will be the light of the world. And all the nations of the world will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
He will take all believers with him to heaven and he will send all who did not believe in him to unimaginable eternity in hell. No one knows the day or the hour of his return, but he gave us signs to watch for. Jesus said that many will come claiming to be the Christ and will deceive many. We will hear of wars and rumor of wars. Nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes. Christians will be persecuted and be put to death. Many will turn away from the faith. People will betray and hate each other. A whole bunch of false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Wickedness will increase and the love of most will grow cold. Yet while all these things are happening, Jesus said, it will be like the days of Noah. A worldwide destruction was coming, but the people did not get ready for it. They were busy planning weddings and trips and meals with friends and family. Noah said God was going to send a worldwide flood. And then he worked on building the ark for more than 100 years. Get ready for what, Noah? A flood? That's what you said last week. That's what you said last year. That's what you say every year. But it doesn't look like rain. And in the middle of living life, the floodgates in heaven and in the earth burst forth and swept them all away. Was 100 years not enough time to get ready? Or was it, as I see it, too long for people like us who can so quickly lose patience and get distracted and become preoccupied with things in this life? When the Son of Man comes with all his holy angels and a trumpet blast that will wake the dead, the days of watching and waiting and being ready will be over. And it will be too late for anyone to get ready. Jesus often spoke to large crowds, but on this day, only hours away from his departure, Jesus gathered the small group of his disciples for this special sermon. He knew they would be tempted to grow weary in their watching and waiting for him to return in glory, but he wanted them to be ready. He wants you and me to be ready. And he used this parable of the ten bridesmaids to help us. Ten bridesmaids had been chosen to wait along the path to welcome the bridegroom. They had the great privilege to escort him to the wedding banquet and to his waiting bride. Today was the day, but they didn't know what time that he would arrive. So they all took lamps with them in case it got late, but five were foolish and five were wise. The five foolish took lamps, but the five wise took lamps and jars of oil. They wanted to be ready no matter what time he came. The bridegroom took longer than they thought. They fell asleep waiting for him. At midnight, the cry rang out, the bridegroom is here, come out to meet him. They all jumped up and lit their lamps, but the lamps of the five foolish flickered. They were running low on oil. They said to the wise, give us some of your oil. But they said, no, we might not have enough for both of us. Go buy some from the store. But while the five foolish were still on their way to the market, the bridegroom arrived. The five wise bridesmaids who were ready went into the wedding banquet with him, and the door was shut. When the five foolish finally made their way back, they said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. Now we're ready. But he said, I don't know you. The point Jesus was making is be ready. Always be ready. Because you don't know the day or the hour the Lord will return. 
Everything that Jesus said would happen before he returns is happening and has happened. Nations threaten war against nation. Wickedness is celebrated. The love of most has grown cold. The earth quakes beneath people's feet all over the world. Famines are devastating while we throw food away. And there has never been as many smooth-talking prophets with huge followings as there are today. But so far, every new day in our lives, whether it's filled with trouble and sorrow or with great joy, the Lord has not returned yet. So what are the chances that he'll return today? Well, the chances are better than ever. The point, Jesus said, is be ready. Always be ready. Because he will return. He knows when. We don't. And after reading this, I don't want to ever run out of oil while I'm waiting. And I don't want you or anyone else to either. This past Wednesday, I was still working in my office late into the evening. I knew in the back of my mind that there was a tropical storm that was going to blow through during the night. But when I heard the wind pick up outside the window, when I heard some drops of rain against the window, all of a sudden I thought, I never got the house ready for the storm. As soon as I could, I drove home and I put everything away that could be blown away. That's what life does. We can get so busy with things that we forget how important it is that we do everything we can to be ready for Jesus and to be ready all the time, every day. Jesus invites you and me through this word of God to take an honest look at our hearts and at our lives and to ask, am I ready? Am I doing everything I can to be ready? What happens when you check your faith oil? Is it as full as it can be? Are you filled to overflowing so that you can have oil to share with others so that you both will be ready? I know how to check the oil on my lawnmower and on my vehicle, and I wouldn't dream of seeing that it's low and not adding some before I run the engine dry and ruin it. When we check our faith oil and see that it's low, we're going to do something about it because we want to be full and we want to have extra so that we can let the light of Christ shine for others to see. How do we do that? First, we remember who prepares our hearts to be ready and how he does it. God works through his word to create and sustain a living, breathing, fruit-producing faith that is ready for whenever he returns. God the Holy Spirit works through Christ's body and blood together with the bread and the wine of his Holy Supper to strengthen our faith and to assure us that we are his own dear and forgiven child. If this is how God works to fill us with the oil of faith, and it is, then we cannot be content with just enough. We will crave to be filled to overflowing. Because here in his word is where he tells you in so many different ways how much he loves you. Here is where he reminds you right when you need to hear it most. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and thanksgiving, present your request to God. He hears, he answers. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, you who have lost your strength and be renewed in mine. Come to me, you who have lost patience in a pandemic, and I will lift your eyes away from the worries of this world and remind you of the glories that await you in heaven. Come to me, you who are fearful, and I will remind you to be still and know that I am God. Come to me and be reminded that you who may feel very lonely at times are never alone because I am with you and always will be. 
This is so good to be in his word. We have opportunity for more. If you are able, I invite you to please come to one of our Bible studies. Come to the Thursday Bible study of Romans. It is amazing. It's better than you might imagine. And the Lord will fill the oil of our faith to keep us ready and to have oil to share with those who aren't ready yet. Because ready or not, the bridegroom will come. The Son of Man will come in his glory with all his holy angels with him. Did you picture what that will look like? A pastor who had a hard life 400 years ago named Paul Gerhardt did, and he wrote this hymn to help stay ready. Lord, when your glory I shall see and taste your kingdom's pleasure, your blood my royal robe shall be, my joy beyond all measure, When I appear before your throne, your righteousness shall be my crown. With these, I need not hide me. And there, in garments richly wrought, as your own bride, I shall be brought to stand in joy beside you. Dear Christian, be ready. Always be ready so that when you hear the trumpet call, you will enter into the wedding banquet with him and join the saints triumphant. Amen. I invite you to please follow along with me as I'll offer a special prayer. And at the end of the prayer, I'm going to invite you to join together with me and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, keep us watchful for your return and keep us ready through your word. Create a desire in our hearts to be filled to overflowing so that we will never be found lacking, but always have oil to share with others who need to be ready too. Please heal our country and all who live in it. Change human hearts one by one with the gospel of your grace. Grant our leaders wisdom and integrity and a heart to work for the common good of all. Use these times to remind us all who and what is important. Grant us a rich measure of patience and selfless love to do what is right and best for us and for others around us in the face of this virus so that we might show what Christian love and concern looks like in action. Forgive our sins. Give us strength to trust your promises. Bring back those who have strayed. Bring in those who are searching. Comfort the anxious and distressed. Protect all who are working to keep us safe in law enforcement, in health care, and in our military. Grant peace to troubled homes and lives by pointing everyone to you. And for these things and so much more, we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Christian, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for committing your time to being in God's word with me this day. What an incredible message. What a beautiful reminder. Yes, a strong warning from our Lord. Be ready. But then what an incredible comfort to hear him say that through my word, I will keep you ready. Stay in his word, dear Christian. Receive the Lord's Supper every opportunity you have so that through these means of grace, Our gracious Lord 
will keep you and me ready for this glorious day when we will hear his call and join him and all those with him in heaven, saints triumphant. God bless your day today. God bless your week. And Lord willing, I'll see you real soon.